processes and tools dominate today's Agile discussions, but we are devoted to the individuals and interactions that make it work. From the beginner to the veteran practitioner, we have something for you. Welcome to Agile for Humans. All right, we are back coming to you from The Ohio State University. This is the Path to Agility Conference. I'm your host, Ryan Ripley. Joining me, Gil Rosa. Did I do it? You did it. I did it. You did it. You nailed I'm it. like two for two. I just had, um, I had just had Ellen Gottesdiener on, and that was a name. That's a longer name. But now, Gil Broza, I'm two for two on the tricky yes. last names. This is unusual because I usually kill them. Okay. I butcher these names. So, But Gil, uh, keynoting this year. I really appreciate you carving out some time for me. I know you're busy. You've got a book signing coming up. So I want to make sure that uh, all the things that, uh, that come with keynoting that you're able to get back to. But, uh, but that is kind of the exciting thing right now. The book yes. came out. Maybe you can tell the listeners a little bit about it and uh, what led to it. So the book is called The Agile Mindset, Making Agile Processes Work. What led to it was the realization that uh, too many Agile implementations are not terribly exciting or yielding great results. And by and large, it has to do with uh, being Agile in name only. Being implementations that are true to a book, whatever the book happens to be, uh, people go through the motions, the results are not quite there, and they can't really know why. If you go online, you will read many good people give advice in this matter, and they say, well, if your implementation is not that great, maybe you're not quite operating with the Agile mindset. And for the longest time, nobody would actually proceed to describe in useful detail what that was. Uh, the only real reference we've had for the mindset is the Agile Manifesto. It's uh, 15 years old and still true, but it is a manifesto. It is brief. Um, there's not much actionable detail in there. It is software specific, very much written by people with a technical preference, which, um, you know, that's where I come from too. But uh, I know a lot of people get alienated by that. Sure. And, and they prefer something that's more, how do I do this, project managing type of thing. Um, there's definitely that element to Agile. There's also the people side of things. Uh, that was just, uh, the topic of the previous book. Um, but all of this stuff kind of gets lost in the mad rush to implement Agile practices. And really the thrust of the book is that the practices themselves don't matter. What does matter is how you approach them the principles by which you guide your thinking and decision making. Uh, and that's really what I'm also keynoting about. So Gil, when it comes to uh, cultivating an agile mindset, what do you yes. think is most important? Let's say that let's say that I'm new to this. Let's yes. say that I haven't worked in this for a number of years and, and you were coaching or mentoring me on cultivating a, a positive agile mindset. Mm -hmm. where, where would we start? We would start with some, some basic awareness of what that actually is. Uh, the word Agile was picked by the manifesto authors, and I think it was a brilliant choice. It conveys so much, um, but a lot of people hear it and they think, oh, Agile, uh, you know, I can just, you know, bend over backwards when I need to, and uh, it's quick. I don't need to do this, and I don't need to do that. So we need to start with the awareness of what's actually meant. What do we mean when we say, again, those principles, what, what, what are they? Things like deferring decisions to the last responsible moment and time boxing and simplicity and collaboration and servant leadership and there's a bunch of stuff. So we need to at least be explicit about that and say when we talk about Agile we mean these things. Why do we want those things? This is the next step in the conversation. Um, Agile is not for better, cheaper, faster. It has been sold this way, um, which is a travesty. Agile is designed the way it is for delighted customers, delighted clients. People who request, you know, a team to build stuff and who take delivery of that thing, we want to delight them, not just be on time and on budget. We want to make them happy because then they'll come back. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so we need to make sure that the conversation is about the right things. Now, if a delighted customer is not really what you're after, if instead you just need to whip something out fast, on time and on budget, get it right the first time, we have methods for that, and they're not called waterfall, and there's nothing wrong with them, but they're suited for that purpose. So we need to make sure that um, even when you're just starting out, you need to know why you're going to use those particular methods and that you use them uh, for the right reason for you. So you're really talking about fit for purpose exactly. when it comes to applying Agile and having even the awareness to know that this project just is not a good candidate. Right. And 
do you, so as an agile consultant or, or working in, a, in an agile environment, what does that conversation look like when a client comes to you and says, hey, we want to do agile and none of their projects look like an agile project? Well, that conversation usually unfolds over uh, some period of time during which they have a bit of time to reflect. Um, I might do an assessment. I might do some very quick verbal assessment in that conversation to understand what's going on. But then if I see a potential um, ill fit, I, I will lead the conversation to that and say, you know, for what you're trying to accomplish here, um, I'm not sure that Agile is the most suitable framework. Sure, you can, you can make anything yield to Agile. You can, sure, but really, why would you, right? Um, Seems so, very unagile <laughs> to make something yield. <laughs> but well, a lot of people don't think this way. They think that agile is the new standardized process that will, you know, take care of all the problems that we couldn't deal with in the, with the old standardized process. But right. agile is not a process, and it's definitely not standardized. And and as such, um, there are situations when it's neither waterfall nor agile, nor lean actually, and you need to roll your own, and and that's perfectly fine. Most people don't do that. They're not used to it. It, it takes a few hours to do. Um, but when you do that, you get something that's right on the mark. Yeah, what I really like about, um, especially your last book, but even it sounds like the current book that you, that, that, um, that's out now, uh, is your focus on the people side of it. Yes. You know, we have to focus there because I believe that's where all the issues are. Of course. It's I always mean, a people problem, right? Always a people problem, but it's always a system of work problem as well, right? So we, we have to be able to evaluate how people are working mm -hmm. and, and not evaluate in a judgmental way. It's really just understand uh, the systems of work in place, the yes. ability to see how one system impacts another and how those people impact one another yes. and then make decisions about that. Absolutely. But that's scary. That's hard. That's, that's a... And it's a can of worms. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and it's true. And, you know, almost everywhere I go, it does uh, seem to be ultimately about the people. The people are part of the system. Their interactions right. are part of the system. Right. Uh, and so we always have to look into that. Can't avoid it. So what led to your, your interest? Because and, I, and let me step back. So you are a pioneer in the, the human side of Agile. I feel like your books are foundational to, to trying to understand the mindset, try to understand uh, the people who are actually doing the work. And so I, I think most in mm -hmm. the community are very appreciative of that. What led to this initial observation mm -hmm. of yours? Because I don't, what, I, what I've learned after talking to so many Agilists is we're not born this way. You know, and I think we all come through, we all come through uh, software differently, but to get to this epiphany moment of valuing people over, over other things, I think takes time. And for you, what was the step? What was the observation or what was that? inciting incident that got you there you know every uh um big revelation is actually a series of small steps sure right uh for me the small steps had to do with uh you know years of coaching people in agile thinking and noticing that what i was particularly drawn to uh were the interactions i was welcoming the difficult conversations i was welcoming the resistance and the pushback um, because it meant that at least, you know, somebody was employing their brain on the other side. Sure. As opposed to totally ignoring what's going on. Um, <laughs> and eight years ago, nine years ago, I was looking to improve my communication skills. And I took a course in neurolinguistic programming, NLP. And, uh, well, I, I got what I was looking for, but I also got something else entirely, which was um, really a view on... Um, how people excel and how they um, can improve things about themselves, uh, especially because a lot of uh, what we have not improved about ourselves is because we're simply actively limiting ourselves. So th there's a lot in that field that has given me um, tools to interact with people in different ways than before. And through that interaction, um, I've come to see what difference it makes when you engage with people, uh, really as people. When when you just you, you you don't force agile on them, you don't force anything on them. Right. So, for instance, um, you know, in the agile community, there, there, there's a lot who will say that you know, agile is right and correct, and waterfall is the big bad wolf, the old style, the don't go there anymore. It was never good for anything. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember talking like that, but I, I certainly don't anymore. Um, 
In the sense that, to me, they're both choices. Sure. One more suitable than the other to your situation, and other situations could be the opposite. And when I approach people this way, um, I find that they're a lot more receptive to opening their minds. And, and I find that when people open their minds, and magic happens. Sure. Magic happens. And so it's the exact same logic that applies when you ha say, well, okay, we do know that Agile is right for us and we're, going, we're really trying to do that. And so we will be in teams and we'll have servant leadership and collaborative uh, relationships with our customer and whatnot. And um, when people open up this way, treat each other respectfully and with trust, and they work at a sustainable pace and all the other Agile goodness, magic happens. See. And I, I've, I just noticed that um, there was very little written or, uh, or told about how to help people with that. So I wrote that book. No, and like I said, it is foundational to this topic. I hope the listeners out there, we'll get a, a link to it in the show notes. We'll make sure that people are aware of, of what you've written on this topic and, mm -hmm. and contributed to the community. So we'll get that in front of them. Is there anything else that you have going on that you'd like to get in front of the listeners? Any workshops, any other conferences, anything else mm. that, uh, that they can do to, to follow you and learn more about what you've been up to? Well, a lot of people learn from me by uh, receiving my newsletter, which is just articles every couple of weeks, um, which you can just sign up for on my site at uh, 3pvantage.com. Uh, the other thing that's going on that started about last year is a particular course that is in ridiculously high demand um, called Leading Toward the Agile Mindset. It's actually a combination of both books uh, taught over two days in a fully experiential manner, no slides, no computers, um, where I teach managers, you know, the, the population that usually uh, gets ignored in the Agile space, I te teach managers all the way up from manager to CIO, in fact, um, what that agile mindset is, what agile leadership is like, and how to put the two together so that they can really uh, create the conditions and sustain the conditions that support the truly agile culture. So when you're teaching that kind of class to manager all the way up to CIO, what do you find is uh, the biggest roadblock to, to understanding the, the mindset? What do you, where, do you, where are you finding people get stuck? Uh, I'd say for the most part they get stuck assuming that they won't be allowed to do stuff, that they would fall victim to organizational structure and policy and dogma. Um, I have heard this from VP level many times. Um, now, granted, I teach this course to Fortune 500s, uh, you know, multiple sessions of, of it, each of them, and uh, it's mostly the same tune. Yep. The, sounds great and I would love to do this but I'm not quite sure I would be allowed to because of and there's usually reasons like HR and funding model and uh, performance appraisals and uh, availability of people blah 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 um, <laughs> yeah look it, it is what it is but I do find that over two days I get um, I get people to open up to another option right right that does not involve the word scrum uh, that does not really deal much with practices. I don't teach practices in that course. I don't teach procedures, tools, anything. I teach thinking. This is a course designed to bend minds. Well, it sounds like that you open them up to what could be possible. And you exactly. can't really, you can't ask for much more than that. So, yes. That's wonderful. Well, Gil, again, I appreciate you carving some time out of your busy day. I know Thank that you for having me. I know the, the role of a keynoter is, is very busy. So I really appreciate you doing this. I think a lot of good things for the listeners came out of this. Again, the books are foundational to understanding the, the individuals and interactions that make Agile work. I hope mm -hmm. the listeners run out, check them out. They're all great. And uh, again, really just appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Hey. Thanks for listening to Agile for Humans. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop us a question on Twitter at Agile for Humans or visit agileforhumans.com.